I'm Johnny Lieberman, and you're watching LMP. What does LMP stand for? Late Night Play. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've been on there. Yeah, it's a good show. <laughs> you should like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> is here hello everybody all right <laughs> what is that that looks terrible <laughs> on a show we're calling that a show there we go all right we'll kill the echo and we'll start the thing up here hello missus welcome back hello <clears throat> welcome back to everybody else we have got a full boat this evening uh you are watching late night playset my name is jay ryan the lady to my right is nicole ryan we will be your hosts this evening our guests are good ones it's tradecraft tuesday first let me tell you that it is tuesday july 27th 2021 Tradecraft Tuesday means we're going to get you set up. This is some uh, – I don't give a choice today because that's some uh, open already gelato that we've, that we've been working on since the weekend. I'll take it. I was, was going to open a new one, but I was like, ah, get it, just get it in her. And we've got so much stuff and so yes, many people sir. to talk to. All right, the Siglet's here as well, which you – oh, gosh, sorry about that. Here, we'll turn the – sorry about that. There we go. Hey, what's up? And we'll bring you in here. Now we have a real show going. Fantastic. All right tell you about it <laughs> we've got great guests tonight they are uh from road scholars and many many other things i like to say fresh brewed and air cooled cam ingram's here also from the real bond group steve serio is here and uh the last time i saw these guys was over at the smoking tire podcast we were doing one of those with uh with matt zach was out of town and uh they're back in town and they're doing ours i think they're going to do the smoking tire again as well but uh lots of stuff to talk about we're going to be talking about cars why they're in town for instance and um and everything else. I mean, anything you guys want to talk about as well. Feel free to chime in. Hi, Guards Rad. Hi, Gronk. Can't be the same Gronk. Could be the same Gronk, actually. Uh, Robert Scott, MVPs. Yeah, big time MVPs. Good stuff. Um, so that's it. Well, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm preoccupied with my body, but I'm fine. Otherwise. Say it again. Preoccupied with my body. Yeah, your body was rough. That was uh, that was a rough walk in today. Today's I mean, there's no more. There's no walking today. It's kind of a, today's not good, but I washed my hair. <laughs> oh well, that's yeah. So you feel good at least. 
pros and cons. Yeah, for sure. It is what it is. You're amazing. Everyone knows you're a freaking warrior with what you've got to deal with. Do they have, is that a thing? MS warriors? Yes. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Are you one? Uh, anyone that has MS is supposedly one. Well, I think you're a warrior. Uh, it's kind of amazing what you're able to accomplish. And uh, <laughs> the bummer of it is, whatever you see is what she's able to accomplish. There's not a whole lot behind the scenes. You're really just restoring and resting and <laughs> trying to keep it together the other times. Yeah. But, but what they see on the show, obviously, is, uh, is, the, is, the, is great, is amazing. And then uh, what people see at Breakfast Club and, and in Malibu and stuff like that, it's amazing. I hope oh. you know that. I hope you know that you're giving to people when you go out and do the when you uh, give your uh, you know your love and energy and stuff. You're you're actually helping other people. Then it's worth it. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and if you like it too, <laughs> I love it, but I get worn out before I realize it, and then it yeah goes under you. <laughs> a lot of times, I switch my glasses now. Hi, neighbor. Uh, a lot of times you're worn out before we even get someplace. A little bit better these days because people know what to expect with you. <laughs> you know, bombard and, you know, everyone wants to come hug and say, and, you know, and, uh, they want to love you. Everyone wants to love you the way they know how to love. And that's very normal and wonderful. Um, y- y- it's just hard for you to receive it in the normal way. It is. Exhaustion is weird. Like the weirdest things wear me out. Yeah. And what other people think is going to help you often wears you out. Yeah. Hey, do you need help? Let me just like just. I had to plan how to get over there when I was way back there. Just get out of my way. (laughs) Hopefully, I can make it to my destination. (laughs) Is that the kind of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You're a trooper. You're Uh, a trooper. It's amazing. It is what it is. Um, In the meantime, there is a. It's a weird way to turn it into solicitation, but we are (laughs) we are uh, starting up a a foundation. um, uh, For lack of a better term, right now we're going to call it a Nicole Nicole Ryan Shabbat Ryan Foundation. Um, The name will be something much better than that at some point. Uh, But um, there will be uh, ways that uh, people are always asking, "How can we help? How can we help?" And there will be ways that they can help in the future, which will not only help you, but hopefully then help other people. in the future <laughs> like i said anyway stay tuned stay tuned for more on that and then the uh, the gofundme obviously is active in the meantime uh which we are soliciting for because it takes money to start a foundation so one thing <laughs> into the other into the other and uh, there you go hey nobody thought we could do this so here we are you know it's all happening yep jay leno's been here dave's next you know i mean cam ingram in the house today steve serio are you Pretty kidding bright. come on Cam's been here before. <laughs> Cam, you look great, man. You really do. I can't wait until everyone else sees you. Um, they're like, yeah, us too. Shut up. <laughs> What's up, Analog Speed? Drift all day. Henry D., I have not seen you since you <laughs> were very nice and sent an iPhone into the show. Unfortunately, your iPhone is straight busted, man. Um, it, it just won't turn on. And you knew that. We knew that. You said the screen flickered. And I thought like, oh, I don't really need the screen, just the camera. Um, anyway, so that has been in the little bag to come back to you uh, that goes to Breakfast Club every single Friday. But you have not been there. You've not been at Breakfast Club. I, am I part? Did you have back, 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 back. I said it twice. I thought the, thought the first time was a fluke. Uh, anyway, I hope you're coming back soon, man, because I've got a busted iPhone <laughs> that, needs, that needs to find its owner. Um, Carissable, you're beautiful. And by the way, Carissable, we got to do this thing. We're going to, we got to pinstripe. Uh, Chris is going to get involved and we got to make that thing a special 111. All right. Um, <clears throat> business wise, here we go. Oh, <laughs> business and some fun. Uh, did everyone else see that in, in movie news, since that's what we're talking about, uh, in movie news, did you see the new Ghostbusters trailer drop today? It did. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very exciting, especially if you're somebody like me who's totally into all that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's freaking. Let's do it. Oh, there it is. Oh, come on. This is, this was a, this is a toy. Well, you can all hear that, I'm sure. This is a toy from Mattel. Uh, but we did use to build these things and make them like when we did the car for the uh, for the Ghostbusters, when we built the, the old Cadillac. Uh, so I'm really excited about the new movie. The old movies really spoke to me. They were, they were movies of my childhood. And I am super excited that we're going back to that universe. I don't mean that there's just another Ghostbusters movie. The girl one didn't do it for me, not because it wasn't funny. I thought it was very entertaining. Just it wasn't this universe with these people, with this. Yeah, you get it. So I'm really excited. Go watch the trailer. And then here's a weird thing. Uh, 
I've never actually wanted or liked this. So if anybody wants it, <laughs> let's do a, a giveaway, like a GVBC giveaway. Uh, we'll figure out how to do that, what the giveaway is uh, for Thursday's show. Uh, but then somebody at Friday will get this. It's cool. Yippee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used to help when they were making all that stuff. So we used to get – it's like these days. Like we get some free stuff. All right. Speaking of which, uh, JVBC. Here's the JVBC merch. Go to DualShift.com. Uh, it's David and Johnny's company. <clears throat> and check out the JVBC merch. All official merch for JVBC is available through the Dual Shift website. And nowhere else. I guess in person through them. But uh, there have been, but there've been a lot of similar things on Instagram that aren't um, us. Um, and not the same, just similar. Uh, and that's good and great. I just want you to know that if you want any of this stuff that is us, uh, it's through Dual Shift. And that's how you do it. And then in, uh, just so you know, um, the company is theirs, but all of the GVBC stuff, the hat, the shirt, and the 111, whatever, the GVBC stuff, the, that line, um, our uh, we get a couple bucks from each thing that's sold from that, and our proceeds to that go into that GoFundMe. So just so you know, that's what's that's where the money goes. There you go. All right. Oh, sticker packs. Holy crap! How do I forget <laughs> about the sticker pack? Got to get yourself a GVB sticker sticker pack. GVBC. All right, that's done. Going down the card here. Blowing time. <laughs> Stiglin, how are you doing? Can I? I don't even see you. There's nobody over there yet. There's every oh. There <laughs> And the guests are here, correct? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Oh, my God. It's so funny. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, should we talk about the weekend at all? Uh, GVBC was awesome. Huge, huge, but so positive and so fun. Um, I just kind of want to say thank you to everybody who came out. Oh, they don't have to. Look at this. It's funny. I think it's like telling you guys are supposed to sit over here now. <laughs> What's up, Steve? No, no, you're good. <laughs> I think it's amazing. I don't think that was here last time you were here, Cam. There's a whole, like, area. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to start. We, Walking your own set. <laughs> we, we went hardcore once we, uh, once we realized we're probably not going to move to a real studio anytime soon when COVID hit. I was like, well, let's make this as much as we can. You're a VIP lounge. That's nice. You're a VIP lounge. All right. What was I saying? Is that it? Do I do it? What do we need to do? What was I just saying before that? Merch, I think. Oh, no, I did that. Okay. Oh, yeah, viewer mail. Oh, I am excited about this. It's just for me personally, but I am excited <laughs> about it. I really am. It's for you, too. But uh, <laughs> it starts embarrassing. My mother sent some viewers <laughs> ma viewer mail. My mom, my mom from the East Coast sent some viewer mail. But And I thought to myself, it, uh, okay, cool. You know, here's another whatever. The fuck. Who gives me? And I wasn't all that excited. And then when I dumped it out on the kitchen table, like I just did here, I got way excited about it. Um, she uh, and her, I'm going to say husband, whatever it is, her, you know, her, her not husband <laughs> that, that they've lived with for years, uh, her, her boyfriend, not husband, um, is a car guy. And he's a car, Corvette guy. In fact, he just bought a new one the other day. Uh, not a C8. Uh, he bought another C7 the other day. Uh, but they went and did the Tale of the Dragon the other day. So I got some Tale of the Dragon stuff. We got some Tale of the Dragon stuff. Here's, here's the shirt. With the whole, uh, you know, all the turns and the whole thing on the back there. We got a sticker for yellow car. We got a map of this duel here. This looks like some sort of a handkerchief or something. We'll figure that out. But isn't, oh, look at that. And there's a handwritten note for mom <laughs> I hadn't noticed previously. <laughs> oh, geez, I bet that was in a great place until I did what I just did. It was, it's a note with, a, with an arrow. It says, we stayed here. <laughs> At Fontana Village. Can, can anyone tell me where Fontana Village is on this map and tell me where this goes? Because anyway, uh, it was it was very uh, unexpected. It was a nice surprise. And it's really nice for the first in my, time in my entire life to get a package from my mom that like I like and enjoy. It's very sweet. Uh, the shirt, cool. by the way, is an XL. <laughs> <laughs> mom <laughs> hasn't known me in a long time. I'm a medium. <laughs> but that's all right. We'll figure it out. Or you can wear it. Whatever. Uh, it's the thought that counts, and I'm grateful for the thought. I'm grateful for the thought, because a lot of people know. Cam, you of all people know. We talked about this on the show on Thanksgiving we did. Uh, I was very grateful uh, to, to be in a good place with my mom. My whole life, we weren't always, you know, one of these types of things. And uh, I'm grateful. So, tell the dragon shit from Phyllis. Good stuff. It's pretty rad. 
I was a little nervous about that because I, I was excited. But anytime I talk about my mom, like the fireworks in my head go off. You know? I'm like, do you really want to do this? <laughs> All right, Henry. Oh, oh, my God. I missed a lot of stuff here. Sorry, everybody. Uh, SoCal cars and stuff. My flat six cars and cannabis. Pocket ashes. Angie is Huggins. Porsche Perth, Wine Cats. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. I can't wait, everybody. I'm grateful that you're all here, though. It's good stuff. I'm hoping you guys know some of those people. Oh, we know a lot of them. Oh, good, good. Shortly. Good. <laughs> all right, that's it. I do commercials now, and then we get our guests in here. Is that right? I think so. Oh, man, I'm excited. Oh, I got to get rid of this. These, and let me tell you about these upcoming. This is an old car. It must have been here a long time. I just saw it. It must have been buried. Upcoming guests Rob Cordry, Christian James Hand, <laughs> Magnus Walker, Donald Dicker, Spike Ferris, and Fireball Tim, Tony Rackley, Jen, <laughs> Jay Leno. These are all people we've already had. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. There it is. Woo. Did you guys see the bubbles? Did we do the bubbles already? Yeah. Uh, make, pretty cool. <laughs> I got to make sure. With the Letterman set came the bubbles. It came with all these buttons back here. He used to have a train in the in the skyline and everything. Isn't that fun? What vintage is the set, Jay? Uh, the 90s. This okay. is the one that uh, Bill Murray spray-painted Dave across the front on opening night and the one that uh, Drew Barrymore I stood on to. You don't want me to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I do. Maybe that'd be fun. <laughs> <sighs> Steve's, I don't know if everyone could hear, but Steve's offering to uh, recreate that for us. Oh, Tedward's here. Tedward shoots Tedward's for you, doesn't here, he? Right? Tedward has been here. Yeah, he was here just recently. I heard that. He's a um, very talented young man. Yeah, he's yeah, <laughs> so talented, and I just really, really dig his vibe. Whatever he does and is, he's just one of my favorite people. I love the fact that his name is not Ted. <laughs> Tom. Tom. It's not even Ted. It's not Tedward. It's not even Ted. Right. So Tedward. We said the same thing, and then, uh, but what it basically reminded us of MySpace, you know, hi, I'm Tom. Well, that's not it. But that was him, too, though, hi, I'm Tom. But what's the other one? <laughs> the, the, the movie, movie. with you, with the, uh, I have no short term memory. Apparently, I'm Tom. Disney first date, <laughs> I think. Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. <laughs> oh, gosh. You're awesome. I don't think you need to worry about you. I j used to talk faster. Yeah. That. Just gets caught in my head. It drives I, me crazy. This, this is not really funny, but I heard you trying to explain that to someone the other day and listening to someone who doesn't speak as fast as they used to, trying to explain to someone who's speaking too fast <laughs> that, that you don't speak as fast as you used to, but it's too slow. For, it, it was a whole, it reminded me of the taxi episode. Do you guys remember? What does a yellow light mean? <laughs> slow down. <clears throat> what does a yellow light mean? <laughs> Reverend Jim Ignatowski, the great Christopher Lloyd. But it was like that. They just both sides. You, you, one side got both sides, and the other side just didn't get either <laughs> side, really. Oh, it was great. It was so great. I mean, it probably wore the hell out of you, but it was very entertaining to watch. It was the, whoever that was tried to tell me they knew me before, and I'm like, no, you didn't. He's like, yeah, I did. I'm like, not 10 years ago when I worked and did stuff. And so that led to the explanation. And I got slower and slower <laughs> and slower. It was like the, uh, it was like a, a, the not energized bunny, but like something where the batteries are running down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 lower and lower. <laughs> Slinking yeah. into the chair, just. How much longer? Oh, what was the Seinfeld thing? It was something, yeah, pretty good, not bad. I gotta get out. It was, it was top to bottom, I think. Pretty good, not bad. I gotta get out. If there was a rehearsal, I would have gotten that right. Oh, well, there's an audience. And I, all you need, all Jay's ever needed was an audience. <laughs> No, but she's puffing on something, so it might be in the atmosphere. <laughs> it might be in the atmosphere. Oh, if you need something from Tradecraft yeah, Farms, our friends at Tradecraft Farms will set you up right here today. In the meantime, speaking of responsible driving, they say all that separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. St. Clair Insurance has coverage for your toys. Today we're talking about collector cars and collector car coverage, uh, the collector car market, 
Prices are all over the place. Your car is not worth what it used to be, and uh, most likely it's more. Uh, your coverage may not have reflected that. Uh, it's a great time to check out your existing automobile coverage, and in my opinion, it's a great time to look out at other options that might be available to you. In this case, coverage for your toys.com and St. Clair Insurance. Give Jeff Sinclair a call on the internet. <laughs> At CoverageForYourToys.com, CoverageForYourToys.com. CoverageForYourToys.com. Hi. No, hang on. I'm, I gotta t- you know what? I'm going to free flow without a card here and tell you a few things about Auto Kennel. Auto Kennel is uh, – they're a friend of us, and they're a great organization in that they find cars for people. You know what that's like. Um the issue is that uh, they sponsored our Jay Leno show, so we're showing them a little bit of extra love uh, this week in general. You know we always uh, try to promote them and, and, and uh, whatever, share the love. Um, but uh, some of the misconceptions about Auto Kennel that I've noticed while talking to other people that they've – people have seen the Jay Leno show. They go, oh, Auto Kennel, what the hell is it? Blah, blah, blah. And one, it seems like a place to store cars, which it isn't. And it seems like a place that maybe works on cars, which it isn't. Um, it's actually it's a Highline uh, uh, place to consign a car and to have somebody find you a car. Um, so uh, we have two guys who do that professionally for a living today. This is just another one. By all means, add them to the list. It depends on where you are. There's a guy for everything. Um, but shout, shout out to our friends at Auto Kennel and, of course, the Ed. Uh, and this is the one that I absolutely love doing. <laughs> Jay needs a tie. Hi, this is Jay Ryan from Late Night Playset, reminding you to please like, subscribe, and comment below. This feeds the internet algorithm and eventually us as well. Nice. Oh, they're seeing it. There it is. Here it comes. This smoke behind me denotes the fire it will be when you like, uh, when you're a pal for liking, subscribing, and commenting below. It'll be fire. <laughs> It's fire. It's fire. Woo! Oh, Cam, we've added a few tricks since you've been here. (laughs) All right, all right. We've got a show to do. We've got people to talk to. So um, it's a great time to take a quick break. We'll play you some uh, brief words from our friends at Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. Jay... uh, Lion, Lion has the best car collections ever. Drift all day. You know it's Jay Leno, right? You've written, I've seen you write Jay, Len, Jay Leon like four different times on both my pace and everything. Yeah, hey, he's spelling the name wrong. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing their own Jay. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, quick break. And uh, here's some words from our friends at Oh So Delicious Hot Sauce. The hot sauce. The hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious, it's hot sauce made by bears, garlic and serrano, mixed with love and care, you can put it on your eggs, pour it on your rice, it's great on a leg, it's better on a slice, it's oh so delicious, it's a hot sauce made by bears. Oh, so delicious hot sauce. Great on everything except oatmeal. Get your bottle today at ohsodelicious.org. One dollar from every bottle sold goes to the National Military Family Association. Anywhere you like, you can plug it in if you want. I know, I gotta get a plane of charge. What are you driving today? 63356B. Hey, what? What are you driving today? To get it closer? <laughs> oh, this is fun, David. This is a family this show. This proves that you don't have to go fast to have fun. You don't have to go fast. Can you see my smile already? Who's the guy in the back? Who's that? It's a great picture. I'm looking. There's got to be a story here. My car's gonna feel slow as balls after this, I'll tell you that. Pedal down! Yeah, baby! There it is, there it is. Now, now. Anything you want to know! Anything you want to know! Oh, wait, hang on, now you need your moderator, though. So now we've got Jared Oh my god. Oh. Alright. Oh, wait, now there we go. We need both of our stainless. There they are. <laughs> no, it's good. Is that good? Are we getting free hot sauce for being on the show? Oh, yeah. You get hot sauce, you get whatever you want. All right, let's bring this thing back. This is fantastic. Woo! 
<laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Can't see. Can't see. <laughs> All right, kill the volume there. Nice. And uh, I think we're good, right? Wow. All right. This is exciting. Wow. Back I'm here not. with Steve Serio, <laughs> Cam Ingram. Uh, Cam, you've been here before. Steve, it's the first time. Yes, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here, yeah. man. I don't know where we're starting with you guys, but I'm excited you're both here. The blue card, the blue card, the blue card has very little on it. Simply the businesses you both represent, as well as uh, the smoking tire, because I wanted to talk about our time there, and then uh, with you, I want to talk about fresh bird and air cool. But anything else is wide open. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you booked yourself, so. <laughs> you booked <laughs> you know what I mean? Tell me what you want to talk about. <laughs> These are the easy ones. <laughs> the state, the state of life altogether. No, we can't. No politics. No religion. No. We just keep it to cars. It's good. For sure. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. My, my, my wife has already given me the don't you dare say those things on a podcast that people will remember and it'll live on the internet forever. Actually, and I'm like, okay, honey. And I I'll did keep tell it, Steve yeah. on the way over here because he's from Massachusetts. I said, we do have to keep this positive vibes. Oh, like, are you yeah. a mass hole? Because I'm a Connecticut guy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah just outside of Boston. No yeah. kidding. I'm the, just outside of Manhattan. The village of Watertown. People could yeah, literally do right. shot games on F bombs by Steve. Oh, like come every on. time an F bomb came I out. I mix it up. <laughs> I just use the F bomb. <laughs> I'm better than that. Yeah. I'm way more creative. You don't want to get on one of those rants where I can just string a whole thing together and go, "What? who do you hate that much? <laughs> uh, maybe we do want to do that. <laughs> we just came. You from. offered, before the show, you were going to jump on the desk like Drew Barrymore, so. We, we <laughs> might have bigger, no, I can't even really, uh, I used we, to be in shape. <laughs> so no politics, just cars and man boobs. All right. And man boobs. Yeah. And my scar. In my mm. new scar. You recently that acquired. That looks like a decent surgery. Yeah, that's a good knee replacement. So that's I'm happy mm. about that. It's full, like I can do this now. Not so, a full. Uh, yeah, yeah, full. Absolutely, January twenty sixth of this year. Really, yeah, yeah, six yeah. months in on that thing. Yeah, it's good. He was on. You're walking great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. fine. Wait, so when I saw you, were you on the old leg or were you fresh on the? Fresh on the new leg. Whoa. Fresh you on were the fine then. F- yeah, sort of. Now I can I can actually hop three inches off the ground and kind of trot a little bit. And before it was yeah, it had to be. I had to it had to be at Jay's uh, uh, Matt's show. Yeah. So that was fun. You guys are hilarious. Well, you know, do do it again. We, we try. We try. <laughs> listen, we we <laughs> we try and just present the side of things nobody wants to talk about or can't talk about or feels obliged not to. You know, sort of be so PC and woke they don't. So that's us. Every once in a while. We were doing something last week. Oh, boy. Somebody was making us crazy. It was Friday. And you said, really, this is the stuff we should talk about on the show. And it had to do with... (laughs) It had to do with somebody being so unreasonable in a car transaction that it was like... We have to remember what it is. It'll come to you in a moment... Once you take that that stupor off your face. I use them. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's... um, what was it? it? But it was something, and we were just daily on a daily. rant. You were driving home. It was one of those late night like phone rings. Just got under your craw. Kind yeah, of well, just fo- Jay Leno. What's my beef? You know, like, yeah, what's my beef? <laughs> that whole deal. <laughs> that is good. But is that what you mean? Like, just something got under your 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 craw, and you just said, oh, "I've got to talk about this." That kind well, of it's just people behaving badly sent you into a tailspin, and then of course I piled on, oh. and it, it. There's a couple things in the last month or so where. We've always said this is what the show, sh- this is whatever the next show should be about, and it's about being agreeing to buy a car in Europe and then having it inspected. And the inspection was like we sent guys over there to have a car inspected in Barcelona because we couldn't go, and uh, it was like saying, "Okay, well that's green, thanks." There's your inspection. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. really? Here's okay. Your money, that so kind then of thing. we still yes. agreed to buy the car and immediately got sold out of it by the guy that agreed to sell it to us. So stuff like that happens oh. on a million dollar level where you go. You, <laughs> yeah. I if I ever go to Barcelona, this. I will just beat the Spanish out of you. It was just like, really? I mean, really? You agreed to sell us a car via a broker in Germany, who was we realize is another, you know, complete massive oh, goat it. turd. Is there a lot of that in your business? I don't mean to cut a lot you of off, it. Goat turds. Yes. I just think of the old days of like used cars. We were talking about used cars on the porch on Sunday with Jay Leno. Yeah, and uh, I, I love that movie. It was Bob Gale, Robert oh, Zemeckis. Yeah. It's yeah. before Back to the Future, but. They really showed all the shit that people really used to do. I mean, oh. in my days in the car business, they were still rolling back odometers before yeah. they went digital and stuff like that. Is is there just a lot of like it's shady even, used car behavior at every level? Is that all it is? Sure. Life. I mean, at every level. I mean, in, in this kind of market, like we're in a hyper bubble right now. Like the market's so hot across the board with Porsche. 
every level, every model of Porsche yep. is on fire. Oh. And it just brings out just hot. it brings out the best and worst in people on both sides, the buyer, the buyers and the sellers. It just yeah, it's when, anytime you involve money and a human being, yep. and there's a chance to make a dollar more if you turn your back and hiccup and he can sell it to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, liars, cheats, and thieves, unregulated business, what could possibly go wrong? A global, be, you know, a global a billion dollar do, business that's unregulated, I mean, yeah. what could go wrong? Yeah. I mean, one, one of our colleagues got a, a text from a guy today who is actually been incarcerated a couple of times was dipped in the thames river in a straight coat and threatened to be killed if he didn't come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars the next day and this guy's still out in the world after he yeah stole five million dollars worth of cars from a well-known guy who can't find him but we hear from him and he's like hey i have these two cars for sale yeah, stop I, I, calling I, I, me I bet you do stop. <laughs> what is this number so, and people go like how bad is it it's like how bad is it i mean <laughs> and, and again another good friend of ours we had dinner with client last night was approached by somebody and it was one of those just give me this money and I'll get a car for you in Hong Kong. We So, wait a minute. The car's in Hong Kong. You don't know the serial number. You're not telling me where the car is, but you want a quarter million dollars to secure it. And Wire to you our, directly. Our friend yes. didn't know the guy he was dealing with. And I just said, Makes if you sense. ever send a just a nickel to this thief. Maybe he was a king of Romania or yeah. something, like those emails, you know? I promise to get you a bunch of money well, back. I, yeah, it's possible you may have a large settlement coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ndugu's wife, who passed away, and this and that, yeah, the you general. You didn't know them, but we've been looking for you for a long time. And I'm the lucky. Why am I so lucky? Yeah, so there's so. scams. And I guess you're right. People are always talking about, you know, it's just the car business. It's like, no, man, no. it's money. It's, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter about whether yes. it's cars or art transcends or what. transcends all it's industry, money. All, yeah, all commerce. It transcends yeah. all commerce. You know, in, in a, when a handshake doesn't mean anything anymore, it's like, and I'm so foolishly old school where we agree to do something, we're going to do it, and... Oh, my gosh. You know. You want to get someone fired up, so on the whole Spanish, I call it the spe- Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He like sends his tirade email, and it's like a bunch of people are copied on this. And these are like somewhat famous skeezy European brokers, and there's like six people in the deal. And he goes, "Google me, because <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna write you up in sports car market." I mean, he is all lit up, like on a boomer tirade. Like, just it was great. I was like, "Yes, yes, yes. this is I'm why I'm friends with Steve." Sergio. I'm with you on that one. I celebrate it and salute it. Are we wrong for that? No, no. Oh, okay, good. No, I want to take. I want to call people out by their name. I want to tell them what yeah. happened. I want to show people the email train and go, "Don't deal with this guy." Yeah. So. Here's what happens. Yeah. Take it out of the equation. And unfortunately, mm. there's so much passion. I mean, you guys have been part of this new decade of passion for Porsche and the collector car hobby. And there's so many people that have good intentions and want to enjoy the hobby and they're willing to consume. And there's so many predators in oh, the industry that are preying on people's emotions and yeah. cash flow. Yeah. Of course. So, I mean, we're in, we're in a whole new generation because of social media where it's accessible. So, the, the great disruptor. That's interesting too. Everybody yeah. can get to everyone. Everyone can get to everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's pe- why, as like dealers, yeah, yeah, as dealers, we try to own our things. Because in the broker world, people go around each other. The the smart broker eventually figures out who the end person is, and they just go around it. Yeah. And so we just avoid all that ridiculous politics in the first place. By that way, you have the asset. We have the whatever thing. it happens to it's hard be. Hard to negotiate. Like, if you, you can only deal with me when Correct. I'm the guy who has it. Correct. Yeah, that makes the great a tremendous com- amount of sense. Great three components of the deal: the car, the title, and the cash. And if you're controlling all three of them, nobody's going to be disappointed. And there's recourse dealing with people that have been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing. The you have great, to have skill sets to do this? Great, <laughs> I'm thinking about doing a TED Talk. <laughs> Maybe it could be Ted Ward Talk. That's but it's Ted, a Ted Talk. <laughs> Ted Ward Talk. So, He'll shoot it for you. It, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing to me how a captain of industry who's got teams of lawyers, who's got everything at his access in the world, will lose his mind and throw all common sense out when he goes to buy a car. 100%. And he goes, well, the guy told me this was, you, when, did you, when you bought your house. There was no house, due diligence. Yeah, when you no. bought your house, did you buy it blind? Yeah. When you bought a, a diamond ring, when you bought a vintage Rolex, did you did you not do some it due is, diligence? No, no, the guy told me, blah, 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 blah. Like, it is mind-boggling. Like, captains of industry, to your point, like people that are hyper-successful in their professional lives, 
And I think we are all a little bit of guilty, all of us in our personal lives. There's that one thing you really enjoy, right? You're just going to be told it's good. I love bourbon. Oh, it's a great new bourbon. You should try it, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I don't take the time to call my friends to actually know what they're doing with bourbon, you know, because it's like, you know, like everything. I'll try it. I'll tr- I'm like, yeah, it sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's just the same par- parable. It's just like, you know, why would you not, if you're buying a $2 million car or $25,000 car for that matter, Put some homework into it. Just find somebody that might have some knowledge beyond your just getting into this wonderful sort of world naivete. See, I guess for me, we're dealing and living in the world that I do already know and like. Perhaps when it becomes a financial asset versus a passion, yeah. uh, it becomes, well, I don't know that much about this, but I trust Steve or Cam, and so they just stay, hey, uh, go uh, whatever the heck. Is is there some of that? To but it? your philosophy is the best way to approach this. And I tell customers, the most highest level guy to the first person beginning, just buy it because you're passionate. Don't buy things that you're looking for a return. Right. It's not it's a ridiculous. Yeah, you might get it, but I mean, that's not at all that's what That's not the reason you should be doing this. And right? by the way, if you're looking for that, then you're not going to drive it and enjoy it, which is the whole per- point from my perspective. Oh, my 100%. God. It's a conversation you've had a thousand a million Yeah, and times. I, there's not one over the other. I'm not like, you yeah. should drive that. I'm not one of those people. Right. But I do get irritated when somebody goes to me, I can't believe you're putting so many miles on your car. I'm like, fuck off. Right. That is our right. mobility. That right. Those are her legs now. Right. We are living our life in the way that we choose. How about you mind your own? I think, I, think, I think there is <laughs> a little. Hey, hold on. If I forget to tell you later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're using the whole fist doc? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Sir. Fletch. Fletch. Dude. Dr. Rosen penis over yeah. here. Dr. Rosen Rosen. <laughs> Dr. Rosen. How we brought a Fletch quote in this? Yeah, he did. He's, he already, he's got the first one in. Uh, <laughs> no, it I, is. You, listen, you guys had me. I was a little nervous for this. I felt like I had to get myself ready because you were killing it on this. If anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, go watch their last appearance on the smoking tire. After this show, obviously. Uh, uh, you yeah, just, stay for this. For, you're, for you're Christ's clear, sake, stay for this. You're clearly <laughs> friends in real life, and that that translates, and you obviously clearly get along in real life. You're like uh, Mythbusters in a weird way. Oh. You're like the car well, Mythbusters. We're like, so uh, completely polar opposites in our personalities. That's, and, and that's, that's, why, what, that's what, why we get along. That's what works. Notice my hair. Who's the, <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Silver Fox. Well, so I know which one's which then. Yeah, sure. for sure. <laughs> what? Oh, so, sure. he, the old Sherbert here had to shave everything before he got here. Like the quarterly shearing of the yak. Yeah, the Sasquatch. Yeah. I take you about 20 great. pounds That's off. Fresh. Thank you. It is fresh. <laughs> the neck hair is at a minimal right now, and the ear hair is all been. It's dull yeah, and trimmed yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. It's, good. it's really those clips tie and like tight. <laughs> so we were talking not about my follically heavy body. We were talking about something else. Well, I can't think of what else. I know what you were talking about. And I tell you, like listening to the introduction, I do. You know, I really love reading your personal instagram and your stories and your blog Nicole. thank you i love reading your retroactive st- stories of your thoughts about dealing with your disease and what life used to be like and what it is now and i think it's so great uh, i really do enjoy reading that and i try to really curtail and curate what i consume like the counts i look at or anything you know because time is precious and i just think it's wonderful that you really remind us that time is precious and well, and if you're taking every single day and embracing it and doing what you like, you said what you want to do, right. and you guys are together. Come on, <laughs> what's what's better than that? Absolutely nothing. People that, don't find a partner for life. And the and fact most that people we know don't have partners. And the fact you that know? you're not hiding, and you know that you're saying MS warrior, but you're not and hiding. You're making it. fun of us with a slow speech. What the <laughs> <laughs> So, How could lazy, she not? never even helps Nicole me McMahon here up is already, laughing you know? I know, she's like, she sounds just like McMahon I was like, she does <laughs> she's, she's, yes. she's the best hey oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, another one That's a singer You are correct, sir <laughs> He's really going, ask, going, what are we, what are they talking yes. about? How old is your like, right. How old are you? No, oh, right. Okay. Oh, my oh my God. Meanwhile, they shot it right up the street in beautiful yeah. downtown Town Burbank. Burbank. Right. <laughs> you got all those beautiful bad decision years ahead of you to make. Yeah. The, the, so his name, this is Joey, by the way. Yes. His name is the Stiglet because he is a car oh, guy. Oh, okay. He's a racer. And nice. he also uh, does, uh, he's got his YouTube channel where he does car videos nice. and stuff as well. So That's he's fantastic news. So Stiglitz. he's a little young Stiglet. Now, the thing is, the name was great when he was a kid. He shot up like a foot this year. And he became a man. His voice dropped. He's got facial hair, sure. the whole thing. So now I mean, we might need a new name. I don't know, but this is the Stiglet. Try Ted. That's Ted. Who- <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's taken. <laughs> 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 
Maybe you could be the Ted Let. Oh, that's the wrong direction. It's, it's the just wrong thing. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same problem. This is impressive. Um, keep racing, man. Oh, keep doing yeah, it. Keep doing what you love. Keep doing it. Keep thank, every day. Thank you for for that. Thank you for mm. showing a lot. us love. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I really do. I'm not saying that. I really enjoy reading your pieces. They're really they're reflective on the human condition, which we're all a part of. Thanks. They you. can be seen on WordPress. Yep. New life of old Nicole. Yeah. WordPress.com. Yeah. Every time you know a new one, I'm on there. I <laughs> actually take the time. Um, Thanks, Gail. I think I, I agree. I can't wait till they're in one place for people to. Yep. Yeah. I yeah. think that would be will be really nice. Okay. She's working on a book. I don't know if you guys knew that. Let's go. A book of essays. Let's stuff. go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's Sorry. people who are willing to help you. Here. <laughs> I'll let you talk up. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's turning to writing because yes. she she used to be a, a mouthpiece, you know, yeah. pro- professional PR person. I don't know if you knew that. She was no. like Mm-mm. every A level comedian that mm. you would know today. She's worked with from the Apatow crew to the <laughs> the Will Ferrell crew mm-hmm. to Chris Rock. I mean, she's really worked with all of them. She's flown privately with Seinfeld. She's worked with Spike Ferriston. Mm. Um, everybody on that wall, <laughs> and then some. She launched Super Bad. She won Emmys for Children's Hospital. She's she was super absolutely she didn't incredible. work with Keith Moon. <laughs> that's, that's not, <laughs> Keith that's Dimitri Martin. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> <laughs> Sir, get your life together. Oh, I'm just trying to throw <laughs> oh my god, this is like retro. <laughs> Sure, there's no now that's the Ed with. Sullivan show, yeah, even before before before, <laughs> before, uh, before Carson, even. Uh, anyway, so she was uh, she and she was PR for all those mm-hmm. people and keeping all those lives straight. So she was like a professional. My whoever this person is, awesome. All she wants to do is that. I can't. No, not. So switching to writing, <laughs> sir. That was great imitation. <laughs> Very peaceful. And my wife was worried about. Yeah, me. exactly. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing that for you yeah. and your wife. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because we are on this journey, it is yes. me who making making her laugh with this inappropriate stuff. That is what's keeping her alive. Well, it's and like, me not, it's acknowledging, both, right? Both it's, like, it's a it's a it's just little how we deal with it. It's a micro bubble into what we've said over the last, especially well since the explosion in your family, which was your big thing. Um, your big thing. Well, it's big. That's a big turning Sir. point. Sir, it's, it's a big turning point. I'm super fit now. <laughs> I'm a race car driver. So, can we just talk about that? Signing uh, autographs for yeah. everybody now. Oh, scooting yeah, around. Talk about Pike's scooting for around LA. You're just getting cars. Right? Scooting. <laughs> the explosion <laughs> so, is three years ago. That's so three. 2019. Okay, but that was, but that was right after the, you were here last. Though. It was right you after you were here, and then we had boom. a huge explosion. So man. go ahead, Steve. The point is, and it goes from your dad <laughs> down, but you and I have talked about this about enjoying every single day, and I go back to. A sign in my office. It was on my 50th birthday cake 11 years ago. It's the Warren Zevon Enjoy Every Sandwich. This is, this is, and this that's is my credo. exactly Enjoy. what you have to do. I mean, do. you're sitting in the chair right now. I, I, I am. Is, was, was this that set? No, he it was died later. But look at you getting yeah. all crazy. <laughs> about I'm it. Like, I'm curious if I start talking about Warren Zevon. Oh so it, it, that's <laughs> what we've talked about, especially through COVID. I mean, not to be maudlin and macabre and everything else. I've had three people die in the last 10 days oh, that I Jesus, knew that either started with one was 72, one was 67, and the other one, and he's not dead yet, but he probably will be soon. He's 73. <laughs> he, and they were all. He's in a Monty Python movie? Yeah, he's a little <laughs> bit like, I'm not dead yet. He's just in the ICU. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. How you guys are bringing all this in? It's just amazing. You're feeling a bit better. So. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> He's not dead yet. It's, it's, <laughs> um, but it's, draw, it's that eh? you just never you just never know. Everyone over you know, the age it, of forty five listening to the show is enjoying this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All, yeah. all seven time. of them. Everyone, <laughs> all the millennials are like, "Yeah, let's yeah, move on." Gonna talk, <laughs> about, gonna talk about cars. Stop talking about shit we don't know about. We don't care about. We want to know about cars. Yes. <laughs> and you can't. Well, you, you can't start off. You can't tell people. You, you should. To your point, and I'll put a bow on it, and you can keep talking. You really want to buy a car because it's going to make you love the experience. Wow! That oh was my genius. god! That was genius. Oh my god! I can't I believe know. you I got it. there. That was freaking great. My overused. Uh, it should either lower your blood pressure when you're looking at it in your garage, smoking a cigar, having a cupcake. I don't care what you do, or raise your blood pressure <laughs> yes. when you're driving it, and it's the greatest thing ever. And the wheels oh, yeah, about right, to fall right. off because you're driving it so quick, and maybe that's 45 miles an hour. Um, that's, that's that's it. That's the whole thing. Don't call and start the conversation with it. 
well, what can I buy that's going to be worth more <laughs> next year? Fuck oh, you. Line oh, starts. Yeah. By the way, we get that call every day, every every hour. What's a good investment? You must have an answering machine because <laughs> yeah. of that call. Yeah. What does a Porsche portfolio look like? <laughs> oh, God. Well, we talked about that actually on the fair show because some yeah. people do. They just, they're looking to buy uh, uh, existing collections, right? Like they want an all up. Give me all the RSs. Look, or we were can guilty. I get the, uh, we were guilty of it. My family mm. did all that nonsense. I mean, we had some of the lowest mileage things and the most rarest things we didn't use them and then we had the explosion it was tragic most tragically some individuals lost their lives in durham that's that's the bigger and, problem. and that's the bigger problem but you know we went through pardon the pun paradigm shift after all that and we're just like oh yeah we forgot the whole reason we got into this because we used to drive the cars as a family before i d- established a business out of it and all these other things we used to take road trips together we used to go before there was cars and coffee we actually just had coffee with friends driving cars and all that stuff you, you've invited us when we come down we're yeah. going to drive cars 100 go, go, and I mean, we're going to go amazing. to some great places that's amazing. and that's it all of these things are literally vehicles to create memories and experiences and then none of this is new i mean we're not saying some original Mm-mm. philosophical things we all know this but we're just in the we age like hammering it home yeah some, if, yeah. listen if, for every person who hears it for the first time it's groundbreaking yeah because it does change the paradigm as you so eloquently said yeah and even a, with and the disclaimer earlier, disclaimer. <laughs> with the qualifier. <laughs> and before these things, <laughs> before Thanks, these guys. things became financial vehicles for some people, yeah. they were used cars. I mean, we were talking. On my first, we were laughing with Pete today. The other guy that was with us, my first three fifty six was six thousand dollars. It was a notchback coupe in mm. nineteen eighty. I want to say six T five notchback coupe. I think it was a Super 90. I can't remember. Nobody uh, wanted notchbacks. Nobody wanted them. I, I didn't even know what it was. And I they just used thought to, it was a little weirder and, than and the regular They car. used to chop them and make yeah, them race I actu- cars. I actually thought I could take, right. take that, the roof off they used to and, chop and them. turn it back into a cab because it was a cab with a roof welded yeah, on it. For and sure. I, and I actually peeled back some of the you know headliner and stuff and looked and went, To see where the weld lines are. there are the welds. Yeah. So, but that was, it was a used Did you do car. it? Did you turn it back? No, I didn't, thankfully. First Aston Martin was $8,000. DB4. It was a used car. So you think, okay, 1984, the car was 20 years old. So go back now. I forget you're this old. Well, I don't God. Hate you. I, I, actually... I was watching Ghostbusters in 84. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want a magic wand? Yeah. Proton pack? <laughs> <laughs> I love the visuals on that. I love the, all that computer stuff now. Um, uh, the, the new, I, I hate it. <clears throat> it's the Real quick, though, Marshmallow Man. check out the new trailer, though, because it's, the, it's Ivan Reitman's son. Oh. Who is directing it? This is not Jason Reitman. This is not the blaspheme that was done a couple of years ago. Correct. This has been was... in the, this has been being <laughs> right. made for several years, and then they put it on the shelf for mm-hmm. COVID because they the family and proper moviegoers want it to be released in theaters. Right. So it'll be released in November only in theaters. But uh, it's been they've been working on it for a couple of years. It's the original Ghostbusters universe. I'm not oh, a comic book guy, yeah. but it's like mm-hmm. we're back with the original people and the original mm-hmm. cast, and it's. Today. Ackroyd, Murray. Bill Murray is one of his it's most that underrated world. performances. It's that world. I don't want to ruin yeah. anything from the trailer for you or okay. certainly from the movie at any point, but it's definitely that world. And yes, all of the f- there are familiar faces. I mean, hmm. some of them are – Harold Ramis has passed away. Yeah. yeah, sadly. Yeah, but that's cool. Yeah. So Ernie – 84. Ernie was the – Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Yeah, he's a yeah. friend of mine. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is he really? Yeah. Huh. Solid performance. I mean – He's great yeah. in everything. Yeah. That guy's one of the best workers – like, he just literally is an actor, and he just works. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like an Apple product. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plug. He's just so solid. No, I mean, in anything. I remember back the TV show uh, Oz, the member of the prison oh, show. Oh, yeah. He was, like, so solid that in that. That was a great show. So, he yeah. shows up in every movie I or every TV show I forgot he was in that. Ever. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. He, he's just so, so amazing. He's he added a, a little actor. lightness to that show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you thought that was heavy? <laughs> I was always scared. Of the wire? That's scared. Yeah. Keep you out of jail, yeah. <laughs> you know. That movie, uh, that show was, uh, it was, it was eye-opening. Yeah. <laughs> eye-opening, yeah. I, like I, I do Woo. not want to go there. <laughs> That's reaffirmation. That's bad. I kind of just think, yeah. <laughs> <I don't wanna. laughs> Sir, like, please. I'm not going to pile on. I'm so on. impressed. You've yeah. done so well. It's amazing. He's got me on, <laughs> really the, he's got me on the real short list. Amanda! <laughs> she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm being good. I'm trying. Are you still in, are, do you still live in Massachusetts? Oh, yeah. So Amanda's in Massachusetts. Yeah, right okay. now. So outside of Boston, Milton, south of Milton? Boston, Milton. I'm from Wilton, Connecticut. Well, there you go. See, Flip just turn it upside down. down, you get the, Look at that. the two of us. <laughs> AV club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so if you're born from these places, do you automatically get a radio voice? Is that just part of the? I don't. You know, there's a name for. Isn't there a name for this type of voice? There, are, there's a, a, a intercontinental, or isn't there a name for? Really? Like basically, you have no accent. It's like a well, non-dialect, basically. Like and, yeah, and the, I was. There's a. It's the New England Channel there. I was blessed for not having mass mouth. I mean, I'm a mass hole, but I don't That's have mass mouth. Sir, I have yeah, so. no mass mouth after yeah. three. Yeah. Hang out. I've he works mass. in cars and he doesn't pack yeah. a hat anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you hang out with my sisters, yeah. and you'd be like, "Oh, there it is. There, there it is. There, she got it. It came out." Um, does anything come out? Like, are there any certain words where it, where you can hear it? Yeah. Yeah, it'll 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 slip once in a while. Late at night, it'll it'll <laughs> it'll surface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, maybe six, <laughs> seven, eight, ten, twelve Negronis later, you'll get a little bit of like a oof. Yeah. Oh, shit, I know where you're from. Oh, I was hiding yeah. that a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, it's a bought. If I bought anything, bought or oh, taught or anything, yeah, yeah, I, bought I bought it. I bought it. <laughs> That's great. That I good. love that. Yeah, we don't all sound while. like Mark Wahlberg, thankfully. Uh, not to take away any of his success. But How's your yeah. mother? Give your yeah, best. Yeah, I give your best. Uh, to say hello to your mother. Say hello to your mom. For yeah. <laughs> uh, I've never had the wall burgers, but we used to you watch don't. that show. How yeah. are the? Is it not? Why good? would you want to run to the toilet that quickly? Is it that bad? Ooh, sorry. <laughs> right I get sued now. I wouldn't know. Just made it up. Um, yeah, yeah. I remember it's, their it's thing was that a, they got to, it's uh, got government cheese on it. It was yeah. like it's a whatever flame broil patty with the government cheese. Brother in the family is supposed to be the great cook, the like the real serious cook that had his own the great restaurant. Burger the chef. great no, the the I don't know if it's the same brother that came up with the burger because oh, he had oh, like a high a end restaurant. The there's family. a real chef in the family. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's a bunch of brothers. Oh yeah, there, there would are. almost have to be a real chef in the family. <laughs> there's a mechanic. <laughs> there. There's like sixteen of them. How would you take the Wahlbergs or the Baldwins? In that family fight. Wait, for, oh, for a fight? Yeah. Oh, Wahlberg, for... eight days a week. <laughs> really? No, I don't know. <laughs> you get an angry Alec Baldwin? Yeah, That's Alec? one guy. The... That's one guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he's got brother his brother, Billy... Steven. Steven. Who's the fat one now? There's yeah. Steven, Billy. Daniel's fat. Daniel's fat. Daniel, that's it. That's what I'm saying. Homicide. I think I'd take the Baldwin over <laughs> Wahlberg's. Oh, no way, You got the, this one you zealot. You of all people from this... Massachusetts should know the scrappy There's Wahlberg's scrappy. will oh. kill anything. I don't think so anymore. Mark's a religious guy I know. I don't think so. Oh, I didn't know you were vectoring all of that. I thought you were just going like, oh, the Wahlberg's. We just were like... Uh, fight night, like uh, we can fight do club. Bad, Let's bad do a fight club in there too. Then <laughs> oh, like our cats. Families. That's classy. With the people. Uh, I don't, Although I'm I think still, Alexis I'm still going died. With the bald ones. So I think I'm still going with. Them. So they're down a man. <laughs> oh, it's not a man, is it? Oh no. shit! God, no. Who did you bring up? Down a. Huh. Now Patricia Arquette and True Romance. I, oh. Oh yeah, well, just her in general, her in medium. <laughs> I mean, her everywhere. Super. Now I got For me, it. It was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Yeah. I haven't thought about that. For we are sure. the same vintage for sure. Uh, I was like... uh, but uh, I worked with the other one, Rosanna Arquette. Yeah. On Desperately the seeking Susan and Rosanna Arquette. Well, that's a Rosanna Arquette movie, isn't it? With Madonna. Madonna. Yeah. Oh, Isn't I don't she know. in that? I think she's in Desperately Seeking Susan as well. I haven't seen that. I used to work in TV. Did you know that? No. Yes. Yeah. My first Doing what? career uh, photographer. So Still photographer? Yeah, eighty three through eighty seven worked at the ABC affiliate in Boston. Did you really work Channel that 5? much? Or were you just? Yeah, no, I was. Uh, <laughs> hang on, he's it. <laughs> I, and I don't mean to be rude, but he was working in the Boston TV affiliate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> affiliate. Television, yeah. working television. Milk was Sorry. a bad idea. <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> was a, Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm with you. I started in local television as well. So yeah. that was first career. I mean, when I they needed still photography. In high school when and I you end up being a used car salesman. That's like such a great path. <laughs> what an art. What an absolute fantastic You really overperformed. How did you st- how did you get into the car business? Cuz my dad died, which is why I did it for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There was no other reason. I mean, I no, loved cars, I did but it. I didn't want to be in the business. Uh, Reader's Digest, bullet points, uh, vacations to Europe, um, three kids. summers in a row uh, with friends after college, and I was a car geek. And I simply just noticed that if something was a dollar in the United States, it was a pound in England. Aston Martin, Bentley stuff that needed to be sent back to England from the, the U.S. And I thought, there's a business there. Because if all I'm doing is dealing in the arbitrage of the exchange, I can just move this stuff from the United States to a shop in London and sell it where the, the dollar was, I think the pound was as high no, as okay. 240 against, the, against the, the dollar at that point. So it wasn't just that you noticed pound versus dollar. You knew that the ratios of those amounts were different. Right. You kn- understood all that. Okay. So That's really I just started a pipeline. <laughs> so he does have the a economics big, factor. He actually well, has a pretty brave, big brain. I always yeah. call him big brain. Steve-o <laughs> when it's working. <laughs> when you're not Italian. He's in like, that. if you stop slowing it down, I'd like to get <laughs> oh through this. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> Can you just get to the Before point? Before I finally? forget what you, I'm talking yeah. about again. Arbitrage, okay. Uh, I can't <laughs> remember now. So uh, I big, started the car business. Big. It was a weekend thing being a photographer because I was working in, in television, had my own studio, um, and then I yeah, could afford a nice place to live and could have an okay lifestyle. Couldn't afford a fun car. So how am I going to pay for the fun car? How am I going to pay for the Ferrari, you know, the S and D before all this stuff? Um, I'm going to start this second business on the weekend exporting cars. Jeez. And that. I got caught up in the first <laughs> ramped up market, the false market of the collector car world in 1987 in after Ferrari died, Enzo died. And everything. And, and everything went nuts to 89 and then the elevator cable went like that, like it did in 15, it did it in January of 90, or 91, January we call of that 90. the dark night. <laughs> <laughs> of the soul, yeah. There were a lot of guards, red 911s up for sale everywhere. <laughs> Quite also talking about independence. Like a boat shoes today. were not being used. <laughs> so, so that's how I started. So it was Aston Martin centric for the export stuff because nobody wow. wanted those cars then. You could wow. buy anything. Nobody, would, if you went to somebody's house, I would go old school, Harvard Square newsstand, buy every single Sunday edition paper with one ads in them, and goes a DB4 in Seattle. There's a DB5 in Chicago. There's a, and they were these all these cars that were bought in the late '70s, early '80s when the pound was at parity with the dollar, and you could go to England, shop at Harrods for the weekend, buy mm, Christmas presents, and go, so nice. hey, look, this Aston Martin's $5,000. Let's buy this. Get it home. It never <laughs> ran. It leaked oil everywhere. Nobody <laughs> could fix it. And I just went around being like the Aston Martin savior geek going, you want to sell that car? Yep, good. We'll put it in this container. We'll send it back to England. And I had a pipeline of cars. Then the market wow. went like this. And so it was okay. And then the photography business recession. And you decided hit. to get into Aston's. Well, yeah, I was a kid that was I really fucked that up badly. Should have gotten into <laughs> there you go, kids. It's your first <laughs> shot. <laughs> Please, we had our first f bomb. It's amazing. We're only forty minutes. Oh, uh, because Amanda, it, the first first love was those foolish English cars, and um, yeah, you're actually pretty good at it. Yeah, so you know, stuck with it and uh, lived through the downturn because the. The natural place to jump in the car business was when the recession hit and I lost all my photography clients. I was just talking to somebody about this. Magazines folded, banks consolidated. Uh, I lost all annual reports I was shooting for. Stuff overnight. Like half of my independent photographers went, folded up. Just, yeah. And I went, wait a minute. I can do this car thing full time. Oh, because yeah, the I people have who natural, have money still have money. <laughs> I, I have a natural place to jump to. Yeah. And then I started a, the first garage, failed at it miserably. Started the second garage with all the. I never worked for anybody else in the car business. That's which, great. Yeah. I oh, yeah. For Bob Sharp. Oh, back oh, in the day, yeah. selling Datsuns. Yeah, the Nissans. Uh, yeah. Nissan, well, yeah. Did <laughs> it you ever run 90s. into. It was the end. PL Newman at that end. point? Uh, no, but he was there. Yeah. Yeah. So he was the guy from Sharp. This was when Sharp. Well, I didn't mean to. I just. <laughs> no, I'd rather hear about you. <laughs> well, no, but it's... Uh, what, what do you think this is, Dax Shepard? Let's talk about you instead, Dax. Uh, oh, did I say that into the microphone? <laughs> why don't you listen to his podcast? Oh, I don't God. want to run his drug problems anymore. <laughs> That's why. So... <laughs> I swear we have not done any drugs. We're totally sober. I know you were drunk. You married a princess. I get it. <laughs> Amanda. Let the person talk who's here. <laughs> Yep, Jay, so. <laughs> let's not talk about your You know what's funny? <laughs> Talking about your life story. Thank you for putting us all to sleep with that. Um, <laughs> it's like a counterbalance. So <laughs> it's like the counterbalance of today's world where like, there's n people that do nothing but buy cars and put it on bring a trailer and make a living doing that. Yeah. And then there's like dealers buying career GTs from other dealers <laughs> for a million dollars, marketing it up 50000 I mean, it's just like... Bonanza. Yeah. Today's world of car market and car industry is bonanza. Here's the great blog you can start. And this the, the great disruptor disruptor is bring a trailer. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I applaud we love it. Randy and Howard. I and know. I think, I mean, I use it. I've had, yeah. I think I'm on my 56th transaction with them. Wow. Either buying or selling. This is the secret of the yeah. world. We can sell things on there. More expensive than we have them on our websites. It's amazing. It's a great. Wasn't that incredible? I have, yeah. I have achieved so you take above retail wow. on Bring a Trailer yeah. for stuff that people hadn't didn't call me about for three months, yeah, and yeah. you put it on there. It yeah. goes out. People find it and pay more for it. And they, okay. don't, and they don't call you and put you through a whole rigmarole of like, oh, wait, you guys are an established business. You've been around for 30 years. Right. But, you, know, you know what you're talking about. Are you subject matter experts? Do you have the throughput, all that stuff? No, they just buy it on Bring a Trailer, and it's over, and it's like done. Woo, great. No, I have it. My success and you, they make 30... 
78% or something. So it's about what a good auction does. That's yeah. fantastic. Did you ever follow what your success rate yeah, was? It's, it's I mean, big. But, so, Timothy hates doing it. But. but the blog could be... That would be the only thing. Like yeah. Our sales manager, who's an amazing person, he's like, when we well, like... We, stay with it. We have our sales meetings, and he's like, it was like, well, I think this is probably BAT material. He's like, oh, God. I told him Because so he's just a baby. Will you just please put it on Bring a Trailer and sell it and... Yeah. You know. And you guys are okay with that. So, so I would feel like some people might say, oh, well, that's going to lessen our business. You know, the, the, it, oh, you get that. You, I, get, I have colleagues, Cammy has colleagues that won't go near it. They're like, that, that's a pox on that thing. That's yeah. a bad thing for our business. Yeah. I've heard people why? say that. And that's I ridiculous. That's like, yeah. why that's is it? An, it seems like an old school mentality. It's not embracing change. I mean, the world is changing. And you know, our industry is such an archaic industry anyways. It's like horse trading. <laughs> it is horse trading. <laughs> it is horse trading. It is horse trading. No, literally. it is totally horse yeah. trading. Literally horse trading. Yeah, and it's all gl- glitz and glamour with social media, but it is like horse trading. It's like... <laughs> Here's the great <laughs> blog that can come after that because I find it curious. Yeah, I don't. You probably spend less time on it, but the peanut gallery is what Bring a Trailer is about. Oh, it's amazing! Okay, I love so it. So that's what it's about. What, okay, that's, comments. Oh yeah. Oh, do you ever not read the we peanut? No, guys, guys that, I, we're not in the market. I haven't. I mean, I look for just to see what values you are. You got sometimes. guys that have made twenty thousand comments have never bid on anything. Their whole job in the morning is to get up and comment on every single car. For oh eight, my no, no, God. for eight hours so a day. No. Oh, so that's 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 the okay. cottage industry. In our business, we call that pajama people. Yes, it's the people who are. The opinions at home who nobody will ever even leave their house they're just eh, i can't oh, believe you're doing that you know <laughs> oh yeah yeah haters, i get haters, uh, internet haters well, that, well what? some, is, some is of them are no well some of them are haters but some of them just like commenting and what happens is oh this is their a car outlets. a car yes. comes out i mean this i remember is this whole... is when it this is when it hit me 1991 aston martin virage was sold there uh, I actually uh, like that 90 car. days ago what a, it was, i like that there is big one of the biggest pieces of shit ever made uh, not a terrible <laughs> aston martin a terrible car all around can't get parts for it anymore it's it awful. was a shit box when it was new it barely ran sir it's awful <laughs> and now you've got a whole aston martin that looks like a mustang it's yeah, really you've rough got a whole but i love it generation of people that now go that aston martin is really cool and no. it seems cheap that's because <gasps> you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and you're sucking cheap. in to other people. To put it in people. your garage is cheap. I was an Aston Martin dealer. You can't fix them anymore. All of the cars <laughs> are TMU because the odometer was put in a computer unit that doesn't work. So oh. none, none of the mileage is so. You have all these people going, what a great car. It's an Aston Martin. It's an Aston Martin. I might be so, confusing. Is that the really long Flat one, it's that one. No, that's no. Lagonda. That's, oh, that's, that's, okay. that's no, equal. Lagonda is cool. It is. I really like Lagonda. Lagonda's cool. James Bond cars, yeah, right? The, yeah. Yeah. Timothy Dalton. No, just, no, no. no. The, you're talking about the V8 Vantage, Vantage, which was the thing that looks like the Mustang, that's which, the which I'm really like high on. I've owned four of them. Those are amazing. I love that. Those but I like ball. the Lagonda too. But so the point being, there's a whole generation of people that don't have any idea how bad these cars are. Like Porsche 924 people. Yeah, <laughs> like Bentley Turbo R people from the 80s. The only car that brought me to my knees trying to drive one as a daily. So <laughs> it, it, the blog can know? be, you want to follow up with all the guys that bought these cars that didn't live with them when they were new, and then they try to use them after they buy them. <laughs> and it's like, you know, we, when I sold a Lagonda to a guy. The car was so rusty, and it was his first car that he thought he was going to restore himself. Oh, Oh. Oh, oh, no. All right. Well, welcome to the Titanic. <laughs> Which part of it do you want to sit on? Go to the bow. You get to go to the bow and make kiss Kate and jump over. So but that's the blog. It's like, okay, let's look at 100 cars. Okay, you know, but vetted big-time collectors are buying cars off Bring a Trailer, big time. Like, you go to the top of the food chain. Mm-hmm. Those guys are fine because they know what they're buying. I feel bad, to your point. About the poor sap who's like, I'm gonna buy this Bentley for the first time, and I don't, this is my first collector. I've always car. wanted a collector car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get into it because it's pretty cheap. Uh, so you know, started well, with a Triumph Herald. <laughs> I mean, really and, 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 and again, going back to the Porsche world, there's so m- the Porsche market is on fire. It's leading the collector car world. I mean, we've been talking at nauseum over the last few days with a bunch of other colleagues and cohorts yep. in the industry, and even the Ferrari guys are like, yeah, Porsches are on fire. And I feel bad for it because we get this call all the time at the shop in North Carolina. It's, I just bought this car for Bring a Trailer. You know, I just had a pre-purchase inspection. It wasn't as maybe represented on Bring a Trailer. And it's, again, the, the naivety that they got a $20,000 service bill right off the bat. Well, and this goes for every auction company, by the way. I'm not picking on bat because I love it. And I love all the auction companies, but it's all about due diligence. Yeah. I mean, we were at... Um, well, that's what you were saying in the beginning. It's all just due diligence. Today, we, t- we came from inspecting a Ferrari 4 cam. 
um, before Hang on, we a, came a here. Ferrari for Cam, not a Ferrari for Cam. No. <laughs> that would be cool if you were getting a Ferrari. No, okay. no. I'm not a Ferrari guy. We were just working Schleps today. I had a today. feeling, but I wanted to confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and we, we went and... I have to start wearing white pants all the time. This <laughs> car that, you know, is in going to be in an auction in Monterey. Superb car. Absolutely great. One of the other cars that I happened to go look at in the area where the, all these auction cars were lined up. Sir. I'm not even going to say what car it is. Open the. I'm open, like, please. Pulled, don't. pulled the bonnet, <laughs> released it, tried to lift up the hood, and went. That's funny. I don't remember being utterly weak and losing ninety eight percent of my power in the last day. It's like, is this hood about twelve times heavier than it should he be because caught. of all the filler? And it was like, let's just put that back down. This explains why even I have to do due diligence. Your point is, it was all bondo. It was not a yeah, a, yeah okay. But I mean, it's he was a mud artist, as we say. Yeah, in the industry. exactly. Oh, mud art. Oh yeah, so, you bondo's a brain net. Na- bra- 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 <laughs> What the hell? I just had a stroke. Name <laughs> <ran. laughs> <laughs> Little T.I. It was T.I. Kleenex, a moment. Kleenex, Kleenex <laughs> bounty. <laughs> All of a sudden, Jay had Bell's balls. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> to the gather, you guys are the super duo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, shift for me. <laughs> Go to oh. third. Third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We were making fun of you. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, all right. Get on the bus to hell. You just moved up two more rows. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, no, but it, it, we have to do our due diligence. Yeah. We got a guy who wants to spend millions of dollars on a car, and he said, can you go look at the car? Of course we can go look at the car for you. He's a great client. Yeah. While I'm hearing a look at some other things, ooh, we should have just looked at that. Oh, <laughs> one yeah. of those deals. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, I, I'm overstating it, but it's about just due diligence. Yep. You know? Passion, and, buy and, for and passion, add, do your due diligence. And at a price, everything is a value. <laughs> just just at, at a price. price. Thing, yeah. And there's a difference between... How some things are represented. This is what we were talking about, too. Mm. And I can't go into the details because I don't want you to get sued. And I don't want to get sued. And you don't want to get sued. There's a car coming up in an auction in Monterey. And let's just say we knew about the car. And if you read the description of the car and then There's you look it. at the pictures we had when we were trying to buy the car, it's like, that's funny. It doesn't mention that the whole car was rebodied. There's hmm. a big omission of that. It's <laughs> a big omission in this car. It's like... Oh, shit. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> and Sir, at a value. It's a family show. <laughs> have another shot, kids. Have another kids, shot. Right. So, kids, have another shot out there. But it's what we, it's the minefield we just talked about. It's unregulated. It's a billion-dollar unregulated global Do industry. your homework. I mean, every investment's a risk. It's true. I mean, it is. Yeah, Every true. investment's a risk. That's true. So you should do your homework, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. I mean, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. I'm not putting any money in it. That's where I'm getting. That's, yeah. ex- that's exactly have, my I point. I don't know anything about I'm it. I'm big in Dogecoin, so. Uh, do- Dogecoin. <laughs> Dogecoin? Dogecoin? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ethereum, whatever the other Ethereum. thing is called. Oh, that was great. I don't know. What, like, 20 people have explained blockchain to me. You know what blockchain is? I don't yeah, get yeah, it. Blockchain I like. I don't, I don't get it. All, th- all these things are based on blockchain. Yes. Right. Okay, yes. sure. Yeah. The <laughs> idea is that there's I'm a record I'm believing you because no, I don't no, know. No, no, no. I guess my, the, 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 my understanding is that, that there's a record of it somewhere, somewhere, everywhere, actually, apparently, everywhere. Apparently on my phone, there's a record of your blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love is the people you talk about, Bitcoin or any of this digital currency. It's just like create. They are so – it's like a cult. Oh, yeah. It's and like, they know more than the next guy. And oh, my gosh. With them. <laughs> It's like being in the Porsche world. What could possibly go <laughs> All wrong? All I know is I have blocked more Bitcoin spam uh, in the last like <clears throat> month from Insta. It's actually taking probably about 20% oh, of my right. time on I Instagram. Get those. Yeah. Because I don't like seeing them post it. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to fucking report that and block it. All right, and report <laughs> that and block them. I invested 15000 in this thing. Yeah. Life is good, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank so and so for the hundred thousand dollar payment I just got I for my. Get, they call me Carnegie on my street. I'm so altru- altruistic and philanthropic that I'm going to tell you about my millions. Sounds good, Mr. Carnegie. <laughs> sure. Come on, Jay. Let's go. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Oh my god. Shit. Anyway, uh, did you have a in, Red Bull and you snuck one? They didn't, didn't tell me. In the world I of uh, accomplishments, <laughs> Mister, <laughs> if if I can get serious for just for a second, because sure. I'm really proud of you, um, you had a lifelong uh, something you wanted to accomplish, and then you have uh, since set out to do so. And I would love to hear the story of how it went. Uh, can we talk about Pike's Peak? I raced, went fast. It was good. 
Oh, <laughs> Back to Steve. <laughs> I didn't kill myself. Is the rest of it? No, uh, you no, know, you, you, I, you did it for the first time, and you did damn well, man. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, I have told many people. Yeah, it I'm was proud the of him. Best experience of my life, adult life. It was just. It was awesome. You know, I don't know. I think hopefully sharing the story with people it inspires them to do something. Because that later in life, I'm 45 years old. I thought, you know, try, trying to transform myself into a race car driver. I did it in eight months. That's huge. Went to all these uh, motorsports programs, a Porsche driving experience, which was incredible. Of course, my coach Jeff Sore is one of the most outstanding human beings, not just coach, but incredible person and mentor. And uh, they gave me because you can imagine I've never raced any race. I've never done an autocross. And what? Yeah, I've never done. Anything. Wait a second, yeah. bro. I mean, you've certainly driven some awesome race cars, and I've seen yes. you drive yes. on tracks and stuff. Yeah. You just haven't competed. Yeah, I've never competed, never raced. And uh, when I told so Jeff... So the first one out of the box is going to be Pikes Peak. Yeah. Perfect sense. Yeah, Why totally. Not? Why not? Set the bar high. It's kind of the story of our company. Like, our company's always been against all odds, and... Well, we're going to do this crazy, ambitious thing. How hard, could it, how hard could it be? Having Jeff Swart over your shoulder as, yeah. a, as a coach, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he's the guy. Well, they gave me a whole task list, and I think they thought, well, there's no way this guy's going to meet this task list and these challenges. Oh. And, you know, and going through yeah. these different programs. And, you know, every month I was like, yeah, yeah. And I'd lost 30 pounds. And a became, deterrent list. A deterrent list. Yeah. Of, like, there's no way this guy's actually going to commit this time, mm -hmm. these resources, this energy, and run a business at the same time. And I was like. Somebody underestimated your I said, passion. I said, bring it on. Mm -hmm. When he has low T. I have low T. That's the oh, problem. Well, there's plenty yeah, of time so. for this then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's not doing other things. <laughs> but it was awesome. I mean, it was really... People keep asking me, was it difficult? Yes, it was... It was was a, it difficult? <laughs> Hang on, can we get to it? Where did you place after trying your hand at Pikes Peak? I was very fortunate. In the, the, I placed second and <laughs> in our class. And it was... You know, the cool thing was... You know, the, an amazing experience at Pikes Peak is the challenge. Everyone knows the challenge. The... 156 turns, you know, basically 12 and a half miles, and the succinct challenge of the three different sectors. But the beauty of the race is the camaraderie of the other competitors, and you develop this bond because it's a gauntlet just to get to the race. Most people aren't aware that, like, all the tire testing and the qualifying takes over, like, a six- to seven-day period. And just to get to race week is a gauntlet. And you build this really relationship because the way it works, you go up and you're, you're on the mountain at 3 a.m. for testing. And you have to be off the mountain at 8. And you have these times where you all go up together one at a time and you have to wait up so we can all come down the mountain. And you get to know these people. You're like, yeah, I'm sitting here talking to Tanner Faust and, you know, Romain Dumont. And I'm just like, oh, Romain, what's up? And he's like, oh, man, you're doing great. You know, I was just so like. You're peers now. You're yeah. peers now doing this. Yeah, and that's the, really the amazing thing is, you know, he's world champion, multiple Le Mans winner, fat Porsche factory driver, and you're just yucking it up with this guy on the hill and you're sharing all this nuanced information of what's the car doing, where the tire's feeling like, what's the challenges, what part, what corner are you struggling with? And there's no other race in the world where you're literally doing an old school European hill climb. All of the stakes are on the table because you can die at any corner. You have 156 turns to get it wrong, you know, <laughs> with nothing off a of half of most of them. Correct. <laughs> so, but all of this goes back to just the camaraderie of it and doing something. I've always wanted to do it. Watching Jeff do it last the year before prior in my family's 935. All the years that we sponsored. That was exciting, also, yeah. by the way. Yeah, I mean, we have a long history of sponsoring cars. There, David Donahue, Fred Veach. And I just said, watching that happen and all the things that we mm -hmm. went through with the explosion and these customer experiential things that we're doing with our clients, I just said, I'm going to do it. I've always wanted to do it. I want to see if I can do it. Everyone thinks they want to be fast and everyone thinks they want to be a race car driver. And then when you start putting real seat time in and you're pulling all these lateral Gs and you, you know, like there were days. You're fatigue. When, yeah, you're fatigued and you do it for six or eight hours and you're like, you know, you put 400 miles at a track day and you really discover if you want to do it and if you like it yeah. and if you're capable. All the above, right? All yeah. the above. You're like a crab fisherman to me now. Like, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, holy shit, Cam's badass. I had no idea. Yeah. I thought you were just like cool. <laughs> no, no you're not a badass. Cool but... slash badass. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to it's Alaska. A fucking achievement. Doing that show. Excuse me. Do a shot, kids. Yeah, just shot, kids. We just had another F bomb. By Isn't that, I mean, it really is oh, an amazing huge. thing to me. You know, I grew yeah. up with the the track was Lime Rock with Paul sure. Newman was there yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. And 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 Scott Sharp and mm. Bob Sharp and everything. Yeah. Um, that was fast to me, and that was a racetrack. I mean, it's a mile and a half in the woods in Connecticut. Um, I've never been to Pikes Peak. Yeah. We do the Angeles Crest, obviously, so I know what it's like mm. to operate at that level. Yeah. 
like uh, altitude and those type of stakes, I can't imagine competing. Well, up the first there moment or doing yeah, uh, and being in an actual race car and all of the things mm. that you're talking about. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I've got a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I thought I, I thought I had a good day. I've been there for 12 years. I've gone for 12 years and seen people raise cars that we sponsored and all those things. And I know the people there. And I thought, and I'd been up on the mountain at three in the morning for testing. I'd been there, like watching cars. I watched Jeff one year go around a corner sideways, and like I could see he was smiling in his helmet. <laughs> so I thought, I, I thought I knew. And then the first moment I pulled up, and it just happened to be Reese Millen and the badass Bentley. And I'm sitting there, and like everything had been <laughs> fun and games monster. up to then. And I pulled up to the line for the very first testing session. I was like, "Holy shit." <laughs> <laughs> I am such a con artist. What the fuck am I doing here? Like they're all gonna laugh at that. Correct. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is this is real now. Like you know, I'm, everyone knows I restore cars and all those things. But I was like, uh, I'm over over my britches right here. <laughs> wow. So, so I did that. I just stopped thinking about it and just, just drive the car. So and then you go and then that's it. Yeah. You probably stop thinking about it the moment. But you, you know go, the cool right? thing was is getting rid of know Zort, who's a family <laughs> yeah, friend. <laughs> you know, Zort is ama- again, but I got to know him on a coaching level, which is like one day I was having a bad practice and he was like, Hey, you need to get your shit together. He didn't say that, but it was like, you know, clear your mind, stop racing the clock, stop looking at times. And there was just a neat like any time you get to experience things, like all the trips we've mm-hmm. taken and deals we've done or being on the show a second time, it's all about looking people in the eye, having real dialogue, and challenge each other to evolve and hold, hold each other accountable. Amen. You know? Wow. That's what, it, that's what you got from racing that race? Yeah. Well, that's it was amazing. Reminder. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. So I would say that, it it, did it change your life? Yeah, 100%. Like everything in the last, you know, once you reach some point, we all reach some point, hopefully, where you become self-aware and you mm-hmm. stop letting fear and insecurity rule your life. And that was that moment for you? No, it was before that. It was like, that's when I decided <laughs> to do the race. We do it. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. And he stepped out. Yeah. Wow. And then the race just worked out. So the yeah. race wasn't the, the thing that you, you had gotten there. Was the, was the explosion the thing? Is yeah. That you the said the thing before the, thing. the big thing? But you know, that put myself in this position. You think about how Zort did this. Because I was thinking about when I was driving the weeks during the race, I was like, oh my God, I can't imagine the stress he was going through because he's just freaking Zort. He's like Porsche icon. But he had to start he, somewhere. But no, but yeah. I was just thinking about him racing the 935. Like here he is racing my parents' 935. And when you decide to do it and put it out in the universe and ether, it's like, okay, like I got to do this and not crash the car. And he hadn't raced in quite a few years. I don't think many people realize. It's not like he was spending seat time for every month or a few I years. Think o- o- 07 or yeah, 07. whatever it was, was yeah, the last one. Yeah. yeah. So I think it, what he did last year gave me even a bigger appreciation for what he accomplished against guys that are racing somewhere around the world all the time. Yeah, that's a hell of a And point. he's not, you know, he's a race car driver, but that's not his number that, that one. Wasn't, that wasn't his profession. Well, yeah. I mean, it, was, it happened to be something he was phenomenally successful at. Yeah. He was a photographer. And then he became a videographer and he became, yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't know that. I love that he takes pictures with his iPhones and they're better than an eye (laughs) eye camera, you know, like a red camera. He's mortified. Yeah, Yeah, it's like, whatever his Yeah, it's amazing. He was up at Breakfast Club on Friday and Mm. he's just like the warmest. Every time. Good dude. He's so approachable, so genuine. Yeah. He's a genuine guy. I mean, it's hard for. My dad died when I was young, but he was a professional photographer. He was a commercial photographer. He wasn't a race car driver by mm-hmm. any means. But like, I grew up around Ad Age magazine and stuff like that. So, so where was I, your dad out, based? Manhattan, uh, Stanford, he? Stanford. Okay. No, uh, well, he was born in Stanford. He worked in Darien, Connecticut, and then and then Stanford, Connecticut, and uh, uh, New Rochelle. He was all over the place. Was your pops What's, a pretty charismatic guy? I was never got to know him that well, unfortunately. I was eighteen when. When he died, which seems like that should be enough time, but it wasn't. I didn't develop till you're being a kid. Later. You, you're too busy being, being a kid. kid. I was there was no yeah. sense of I want to know who my dad is as a mm. person. You know, I didn't get there. That's a weird age, anyways. And it, you know, I would have liked like three more years because if I had had like a beer or two with my dad, I bet we could have like kind yeah. of gotten somewhere. Mm-hmm. Why the hell were we talking? About that? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about my grandparents. <laughs> you know, oh, Jeff Swart. Jeff yeah, Swart. Swart yeah. Whenever I'm around him, uh, and I don't want to put too much pressure on him because he sometimes watches the show, but. <laughs> I get this. I mean, he's got a fatherly thing anyway. He's just such a warm, kind of a loving individual. But there's something there that that 
that I put on, which probably adds a little bit too much extra pressure to him that he doesn't need. But he, he's a fatherly figure. And he I has respect, a peaceful. I respect him as such, and, and it probably makes him uncomfortable. He has peaceful. <laughs> he's got good energy. I mean, peaceful energy. It's not. Yeah. yeah. And I think you do not have peaceful energy. I don't. I've never <laughs> had peace. It's like abrasive energy. It's like yeah, abrasive yeah. energy. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. I think there's a lot of people that think Jeff's life is staged. And I've heard that before going, oh, nobody lives that life. It's like, no, he didn't buy the dogs to use as props. He loves the dogs. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't he change uses his wives. Life for the art. He doesn't, he keeps the same. He's, you know, the cars didn't come and go. You know, the canoe he uses, it's not he strapped still has to the, the cars. the first that, car he ever bought. Right? So, I mean, <laughs> he literally is the most interesting man in the world. It's like, he could very yeah. well be. Uh, no Dosecchi's, not on no a just, boat just, in the arena. <laughs> no, and that's, that's the beauty of. This business for me is meeting people like that because he was a photography hero for me, me when he was shooting for Road and Track. And I picked up a camera and started shooting cars because I wasn't a car photographer, but I, I it's what I wanted to do. His and photography kept, was inspiring to me. Oh my God, it was off the charts. Yeah. Um, and I was following him. I joke about this when he was driving his BMW M1 as his daily. <laughs> that was, I mean, it was like, that was what, I was like, oh, this supercar. guy's the greatest guy. Supercar and then he, at the time. Yeah. And then the 906, of course, he drives more than any other person who drives a 906 yeah, on the planet. more seat and time than anybody. So it's, it, with the dog. It yeah, goes great. back to that, if you have the pleasure of meeting great people along the way like that, well, you know, it's How wonderful. How the journey not be amazing? Yeah. yeah. Follow yeah. the Yellow Brook Road at that 100, point. 100%. Amen. I there think are, you guys have inspired people with your, with this. I mean, it's, I no, hope so. it's no joke. That's the goal. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. If you, if you, if you get one, it's yeah. really all it takes. If you get one, that's what I tell people all the time. Do what you love and do it well. It's that simple. Yeah. And constantly try to get better at it and keep stimulating yourself and growing and like everything you said before, evolving. 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 Yeah. I just make a tiny little impact for yourself. I mean, just do it for yourself. That's really what it comes down to. At the end of the day, it's good living. Yeah. Yeah, That's a good living. Make yourself happy. Make your wife happy. What's the sandwich quote? It's enjoy every enjoy sandwich. Every enjoy sandwich. Every sandwich. The, the question, do you know what the context is on I that? Know, that's even David different. Letterman was talking to his good friend, Warren Zevon. Uh, Warren Zevon considered David Letterman the best friend to his music that he ever had. Warren Zevon was a guy who wrote music, but David Letterman then put him on television, which got mm-hmm. people to know who he was. Right. Music fans knew who he was. You know, rock and roll people knew him for God. Oh, God, he's a legend. But like, I didn't know who he was. He was never terribly commercially successful. Never. I mean, he was more successful writing songs for other people. Exactly. Right. Well, he was too busy being drunk at the beginning of his career. I mean, he was a substance abuser, and he was a womanizer. He was all those rock and roll things until he woke up one morning and went, I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, this is the life. And then got sober and probably made his best music when he was sober. Yes. Um, that last album is amazing. I mean, I cry through half well, of it, but it's I amazing. I can't even listen to it, you know, so... Um, so anyway, David Letterman, now this is a, at a point where Warren Zevon knows he's going to die, and we all know and this, this is, is going to be his Letterman's last appearance. Going to see him. Yeah. We all know this is going to be his last appearance. Everybody, he, and he's the only guest for the whole night. So oh. he's doing multiple segments at the desk and then uh, performing multiple songs, mm-hmm. as I recall. But as they were kind of wrapping it up, Dave asked, you know, is there anything that you now have perspective-wise, outlook on life? Is there any knowledge? Is there any kind of insight that you have? that the rest of us don't. And Warren very nonchalantly and humbly and hum- yeah. humiliatingly said, yeah. not really. I mean, unless I know that you're supposed to, how much you're supposed to enjoy every sandwich. Wow. And that was That's it. That was it. That's and it. I started crying yeah. as a kid who didn't even care about Warren Zevon. I was just like, oh my God, I just learned something so important. It's a very point. I can't statement. believe he's, he's almost been dead 20 years. I mean, it's- Holy shit, it's are you serious? three, I think he died. Because we drove across the country in 04 to the Speedster reunion in Speedsters going- I forgot you did that. Boston to, yeah, the quail. That's the coolest. <laughs> 600 miles a day in a Speedster. That's, That's the, the coolest. That was the second time. That's so, a rock star lifestyle right there. And we're listening to the CD in the Speedster because I had a boom box in the, the Speedster because prior to mm-hmm. iPods and everything For else. Sure. And yeah, because he was, because that album had come out, so that was 04, he's dead in 03. Wow. Which is nuts, which is absolutely nuts because- there goes the time. So, yeah. R.I.P. Warren Zevon. I think that's so cool that you know so much stuff. No, oh, I just I try not to forget anything. You know, that's the try not to forget. That's tough. <laughs> I, I, I'm, it's I'm, exhausting. I'm in my 40s and I have CRS. <laughs> it's it's freaking exhausting. Right? Yes. With a guy who remembers. Oh, my God. Trust me. No, you said. 
Yeah, I don't quite have the mind of who's the woman that was on Taxi that remembers every day of her life. Mary, Mary Lou Henner. Henner. Mary Lou Henner. Yeah. She's remarkable. So it's, it's like, I don't have that. <laughs> she can it would be kind of cool if you did, I think, unless it... You know, talk about, no, that's not it's what cool you said. the first 20 years. Yeah. What about the last 40, 60 of it? Like, I want to remember, or I want to forget a lot of stuff. No, I got happier as I got older when I started forgetting shit I didn't need to remember anymore, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, a good why one. are you holding on to that? You know? Oh, let it go. Jesus. That's not him. We'll be in some bar somewhere around the world. He's like, that dude, he fucked me in 1974. <laughs> Oh, the deal. Pepe. Pepe, Pepe. Pepe in yes. Barcelona. Oh We're going to get Pepe in Barcelona. Oh that. <laughs> We're going to get him. One day, we'll get him. Oh is, is, is this still a fresh wound? Is that what's going on? Oh, yeah. On? It was a couple weeks ago. Okay. So. Oh, my gosh. Sir. Nothing like trying to buy something that you know you have resold for a wonderful profit and you take the plunge, and the guy just goes, yeah, I sold the car to somebody. He wasn't even polite about it. <laughs> it was, I'm going to hold this car for you guys until this day. We asked him for wiring instructions. Had another week to pay him. We try, was trying to pay him early. He went, yeah, I sold the car yesterday to somebody in Germany. <sighs> you did what? Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And then Sirius so said, do you know who I am? Google me. <laughs> yeah. Google. I will write about you and bring you down. I swear to yeah. God. I I'm going to make a T-shirt that says Google <laughs> me. Um, do you ever get that you look like anyone famous or from movies or TV? Or uh, Have you ever gotten like, oh, you got a oh, doppelganger? Who's the guy that – I don't get this at all. Uh, well, I two things. Craig Ferguson. I've heard oh, that, you know I've heard that from like a half that. a dozen people over 15 years. Related like, for sure. Related for sure. Yeah. And yeah. used Joey, to go into Ferguson. Dan Tana's who's when Mitt Romney was a, a – politician that mattered and i I'd <laughs> obviously, had a, oh, obviously had a haircut like him because there was a handful of guys at the end of the bar including clarence williams r.i.p recently who went romney just walked in again and it was like <laughs> really guys yeah, oh, good to see wow. you so well maybe the it, smile i don't know maybe did you have a suit on because sometimes no it's just a bad haircut apparently that i had that looked like mitt romney because <laughs> i'm certainly not a, a mormon nothing against mormons <laughs> I don't know enough about them. Uh, and, I, you know, not a politician. Hate most of them. It's uh, weird in the world of talk shows, but we, so, we met him and his sons at, uh, at Conan when you had Rob Cordier and Conan. Yeah. And ironically, you're not going to believe this, same day, same, uh, this is not, I'm not making this up, same day on the same visit, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> this is the three. So, you can, you can six go look degrees up, of separation. Go look up so, this show. I'm telling you, it happens. Mark Wahlberg, uh, Rob Corddry, and uh, and the, the 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 Romney boys. That's so uh, so, who are you saying? I look like somebody? Yeah, no, no. Oh, we just watched. Um, go ahead, throw me under a bus. No, it's a good one. It's just a very dated reference. <laughs> okay, that's all right. I can live with that. If you could do a French accent, for oh. sure, they call him Beloche, uh, <laughs> Belloc from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's your. It's you. You've got a. Okay. He's a, a, a very handsome, charismatic oh, thank fellow. You, thank it's you. A good, thank it's you. Very a good, much. It's a good. Jay for kind of in throwing out the. No, he was. I mean, you remember? I mean, yeah, even, no, even uh, Marion was going to go for it. Who's that actor? You know? um, See that? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he yeah, was yeah. Belloc, and he yeah. kept taking. You know. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. forgot. This belongs in a museum. So do you. You know. All that yeah. shit. <laughs> oh my god! I've never. So I have the. This is the third thing I've stolen from you, Doctor Jones. You know. I'm going to get that guy's image on a t-shirt and wear it with you someday. I think you so, might see it, though, now, what yeah, I'm talking about, right? I know, for sure. Yeah. So I'll give you the great, when somebody says you look like somebody, like the big deflation story, 30 <laughs> second in a, in a rabbit hole, and you know Cousin Lenny. So oh, I, Cousin Lenny is yeah. one of my favorite. So I have a cousin, we, I, we need to bring Cousin Lenny out here on yeah, a trip. So I have a cousin who's- The West Coast would not be ready for Larger <laughs> than life makes me seem sheepish. And, um, I can't wait to be Cousin so Lenny. So we are at a, um, as the, what are the people in uh, Michigan called the dance clubs in Canada? Uh, the ballet, the- You went to U of M. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, we, over the border where all the girls take their clothes off. I think they call it the Canadian Ballet. So we are, oh, we it's, are it's yeah. the red light district. Yeah, over the border. so we're in Montreal, and uh, there's ten of us around. I like how this you one had woman to play the, What are they in Michigan? What do they? What do they call it in Michigan? <laughs> Those Michigan. Like, sir, and then I Michigan. take the bait, and I'm like, oh, she would know. So, yeah, she was. <laughs> she's like. Cousin Lenny's enjoying himself, and there are two women entertaining us on the stage. And this is PG rated. So one of them goes, <laughs> "You look like that famous guy from Hollywood." <laughs> and my cousin, my cousin's like, "Really? Who do I look like?" Oh, naked Canadian eighteen-year-old <laughs> dancer. 
And she goes, you can do it, baby. Doesn't he look like Rob Schneider to everybody in here? And he's like the last looking guy that looks like Rob Schneider. Oh, Rob like, Schneider from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, it was like, oh, dude. He's you, not looking anything you, like you, that. You were expecting but Andy not, Garcia. You were expecting good, somebody. No, that's yeah, not a compliment. Yeah. That's not a compliment. Brought, that's what I thought you were going to do. Oh, you're looking like <laughs> Rob Schneider, baby. That's terrible. Yeah, that's a bad celebrity spot. <laughs> but she sa- when she did it, she sounded like Steve Martin also from <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Because it's like, we're too wild. <laughs> With a little French, yes. Quebecois. She bring her so, sister. Oh my gosh! So anybody goes, oh you know God. who you look like? I'm like, hopefully you don't say Larry from the Three Stooges. But go ahead. Oh, that'd um, be funny. Larry so, Fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's funny. I get yeah, all your yeah. references. Where? How old are you? <laughs> if it's not, I know I'm supposed to ask a woman how old she is, so that would be indelicate. No, yeah, a man asking a man is, you know, I'll say, I, don't, I don't really care. Forty-three. Oh. Seventy-seven. Born in seventy-seven. Come on, you're that what? young. I hate you now. You're younger than him. By the I way, him. by the way, ouch. I, Come on, you're that young. <laughs> I had no 61, idea. 61, dude. And you have 61-year-old or 50-year-old references. Yes. You have a, a real mind for trivia, like pop culture that's crazy. I did not grow up in my generation. I no, grew up relating to, I couldn't stand being around kids my age. I literally couldn't stand it to the point where I wouldn't do it. So I left my high son school Jack. to go work in yeah. television. Okay. I also worked in well, local television. Well, this is normal, yeah. so it explains a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, for real though. I really, And it was just a bizarre thing. I just it, it couldn't find it. Hmm. Well, and so, but something drew you to a generation earlier and what my they dad, found my dad was older my dad my dad was born in 39 okay so because of that and my dad uh was loved all this stuff too he used to go watch the honeymooners get taped on saturday mm. nights when he was a kid he'd go into new york city so like we had the same thing it was just for me it was letterman um he was of oh, that wait era so now you're he tying it in that that's era. how you tie it like, oh, he was it. of got that it, it. era he was he was uh he i grew up with abbott and costello i grew up with yeah. laurel and hardy i grew up with Say uh, the Three Stooges. Three Stooges, yeah, sure. of course. Yeah. My favorite movie, my favorite comedy of all time <laughs> yeah. is Mad, 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 Mad World. Um, yeah. 63 classics. But you know, Stanley it's Kramer. the art of the joke. It's the art of wordplay. It's the art of balloons and the, the um, yeah, going on. Mad, Mad World. It was, it's so many people. Isn't that Terry, the Englishman? Yeah, uh, he's in it too. Uh, Gap Tooth Terry. You're uh, exactly right. Yeah. That's all I can do too. Uh Terry, ah, he yeah, must yeah. Say. he's ah. funny. Mm. He, was, he was one of the funniest guys from that period. Yeah, and I him mean, and uh, Ethel Merman together. Like, <laughs> does your mother-in-law ever shut up? You know that stupid shit was great. <laughs> Fucking great. That's my favorite. I love it. Have you seen it in a while? No, I haven't Is seen that good? movie in thirty years. It's worth it uh, to put on. In does the it background hold up on some level? It's better in some ways because the production is so Bad. fucking huge. No, <laughs> the opposite. It's so good. They spent so much money on this. Three and a half hour comedy. <laughs> right, it's like the Great Race. I mean, that's all. It's the that's same, it's the same thing. Put it right up there. The yeah. identical. Uh, that's a good. Put him in your Saturday afternoon. Jack kind Lemon of at his his finest. Jack, I mean, this, right this came up also on the porch. Uh, ramming speed. Yeah. Ramming speed. <laughs> <laughs> we were with somebody who couldn't stop saying that on Sunday. <laughs> it's funny how it all ties in. All right, so two things. Definitely the Great Race. She's never seen it. The Pie Fight alone. <laughs> and 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 Natalie Wood. Come on, Natalie Wood. I'll watch it for her. You watch it for Natalie Wood. Yeah, she's yeah. she's pretty right? and usually makes smart choices. It's Tony mm-hmm. Curtis and Natalie Wood. Mm-hmm. Like they're 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 one team, and then you got Jack Lemon and Peter Falk on the other car. Come on, it's fantastic! I'm, it's amazing. Yeah. It's a character piece. I haven't seen sure. that in years. It's been me neither. Fifteen years since I've seen The Great Race. And I bet you that holds up on some level too, because there's so many lines where that you hear. Mm. Um, it, it's in the lexicon today, and it goes, that's where that came from. They used yeah. to have the scissor car uh, yes. up at uh, at the Peterson. I don't that's know right. if it's still there yeah. or not, but that was so cool. I don't cool. think it is. Yeah. So cool. I grew up watching that in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh, Same yeah. thing, yeah. Cool yes. cars. Cool cars. Yeah. All right, we should wrap it up. Uh, how do people Fine, throw follow? us out. Let's, how do people, <laughs> what, what, is there anything leave. coming up that we want to talk about and promote? Is there anything like that we, is there Fresh Brew and Air Cooled coming back anytime soon? Yeah, Ray and I are trying to get our schedules aligned. Uh, Hang on, while you think about that, if not already, <laughs> please consider following Ray Schaefer for your backstage pass to all things Porsche brand heritage and the occasional plug for your friends. That's Ray.Schaefer, S H A F F E R. I could watch Nicole for hours. <laughs> like she's. You're just the best. You are just. Um, no, what are we promoting? I'm promoting her. Um, oh, thank you. Um, I'm. Listen, we, we, we're we in the trenches. We're lucky with what we do every day. And well, I got your Instagrams up there yeah, on the screen. It. So that's what follow, we should do. Thank follow you. me on the Bond Group if you care, if you don't. Uh, it's the real Bond Group. Who knows? Yeah, it's the real Bond Group. Um, 
And if Cam and I can ever help you, I mean, he's got his business. I've got my business. Um, just hunting down well, if stuff. You want, if you want more people to know about that business, by all means, you should definitely sponsor this podcast. <laughs> ah, I love the pitch. <laughs> Send me the rate go. sheet, Jay. <laughs> Come on. Well, um, Auto Kennel, I mean, I know who Auto Kennel is. I don't know anything about them, but I know who cars. they are. They were, yeah, they <laughs> store cars and work on them, apparently. They were, they were our premier sponsor for the Jay Leno episode, so we were very excited about that. That's cool. That is yeah. good. Yeah, it was cool. And uh, that was exciting for us, too, to get Jay Leno in here. So how, how long did Jay sit with you? Longer than this. Whoa. We, we did a pre-tape with him. Um, he wasn't available to do the live show, so he just came by on a day when he was available. And it was weird because, like, we do a little show here. You saw we get a little, and there's an energy involved. Sure. But when Jay Leno shows up at the door and there's not a whole thing to do and a theme song to play and you're just mm. recording the interview, it's like, he's like, ah, oh, where do you want me? And I was like, uh, I mean, over there, I guess. Yeah. Hold on, let me get this. I've never really done so this. Did you turn on a smoke machine for him? I would No, no, no bubbles. No, no, no bubbles. It didn't even occur to me. We were so in Dave Lynn and late night yeah. world and oh, everything yeah. else. I had a great interaction with him while I was trying to sell a car to somebody else that he thought the guy had already bought and he hadn't yet and mm. it's, it's another it's a 10 minute story so it's too late yeah, for we'll that we'll come back we'll come back for that save it that's great yeah <laughs> yeah and it's it's that's where I'm I like, get the old I'm like save it save it save it <laughs> <laughs> stop short my wife I, my, I was breaking the car shut your stop shut your Italian cake scone hole and <laughs> sir back to so, Jay for, oh you go yeah. you go you no did. no this so. is this was good this was fantastic thank you for having us first oh. of all thank you oh you're wrapping it up I was gonna finish no 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 here you take it I'll take it uh, the Jay Leno Let me thing. talk in about my addictions. Your, in answer to yeah, your well, question, we can go back there again. <laughs> after, yeah. So, what was it that you used to do? Uh, after uh, after about forty minutes, uh, we would have wrapped it up because normally the show is an hour, fifteen, yeah. hour, twenty. So, so we folded in to one of those shows. So I said, "All right, well, you know, you've done the time. Like, thanks for your music. Oh, that's it. Like, you don't have any more questions." I was like. <laughs> I've known you my whole life. I could talk to you for ever. Like, we can make a You're ten like, really? a ten episode going? piece out of this. Exactly. Go. I'll, I'll, as long as you want to. Can I take I'll a bathroom break? Like, let's keep going. I'll <laughs> change my shirt ten times. You keep that on because you never change, and it'll look like ten new shows. He dressed up for us. No, get it. He, 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 he had denim on. No, sir. No. What? I swear. Bullshit. No. And He's a tired of the jokes. And a jacket. He's tired of the Canadian tuxedo. But jokes. so after what? forty minutes. I said whatever, and then we did another forty-two minutes or whatever, after, and with no blue cards, just shooting the shit. Right. That's in this. Well, he can, he can do that endlessly. I mean, that's he can. In this but, I, but, back in but we we weren't outfits. even talking yeah. cars. We went late night and stuff. So all right. Mm. <laughs> Hold on, I can do my Drew Barrymore for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that's the desk. Yeah, that's I've been desk. waiting for it. Thank buy you. Buy cars from these guys. And again, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, buy cars from these guys. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> take them seriously. Do your diligence. Do your diligence. <laughs> I like to buy cars with men with serious man boobs. Uh, um, uh, I'm right here. Okay, I'm right here. Sir. What am I, wood? Sir. <laughs> Thank you so much to both Cam and to Steve. Uh, there's their Instagrams. Give them a follow by all means. Thank you to the Stiglet who's here as well. Thanks for Stiglet's being here. amazing. Stiglet. There. Keep racing, Stiglet. Oh, thank you. And keep doing what you love, keeping an intern for people like this. You'll learn more than anything is going to teach a, in a book. He's got a busy summer. He's at working at a race shop as well. He's all over the place. What? It's pretty good. Come on. You're you know going to go far in life, bro. Yeah. Bruh. Keep at it. It's 16. Keep at it. Good on you, brother. Oh, you. Uh, let's see. A Paul Freeman played Belloc. Thanks to Tedward on that one. <laughs> 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 Tedward. That's who it was, Tedward. <laughs> Paul good Freeman stuff. played Belloc. All right. Well, they call him Belosh. <laughs> Belosh. Belloc. And then all that you remember at the end, it's beautiful. <laughs> I know. All his face melts up. Oh, that's My favorite right. Part. Uh, all right. That's whipping around all the evil demons and everything. That's exactly yeah. right. See, you remember it. Sure. Uh, all right. I love you. We both love you very much, Steve yeah. and Cam. Power to you guys. Love you too. Love you back. Wow, that's right on. Good energy. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. It's a love when we get it back. Uh, we all love you out there. Please love one another. And we'll see you back on Thursday with, um, I don't remember. We'll see you back on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be awesome. It's going to be awesome. We'll be here. Dude, that was fantastic. It's a blast. That was, I mean, I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding.